Zakir Hussein Alaraka Qureshi. Now that's her full name. Okay, it's a short version. But uh, I use Zakir Hussein as my professional name to, so that it's easier and shorter and fits on the credit cards and, and all the reservations that I have to make. So there we go. So that's what it is. I come from India and that also is important to note that it's North India. So there are two uh, 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 important tradition of music in India called Northern and Southern, but they have an Indian name. The Northern is Hindustan and Southern is Carnatic. So those are two different styles of music. So therefore we Indian musicians stress that, well, I'm from North India because I'm representing that tradition. And I play an Indian percussion instrument called tabla, which is a two piece drum, which is the premier uh, percussion instrument for the North Indian form of music. So that's what I represent. The music is about 2000 odd years old. And the instrument that I play is a recent entrant into the into this music is only about 300 odd years old <laughs> so it's a baby finding its toes <laughs> well from what i understand now uh, you're you're definitely helping us find his way by being one of the pioneers and one of the leaders in that in that particular instrument so uh one of the reasons we're talking to you today is because you're putting on a really cool show uh with three other um, instrumentalist masters master instrumentalists kind of tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about um, that show and who you're going to be playing with Okay, well, I'm going to be playing with Bela Fleck, which who's the grandmaster of the banjo, uh, Edgar Meyer, who uh, has no equal when it comes to bass uh, in his world. That is, I mean, there are jazz basses and and basses galore all over the place, but he has he's the one who's put together an interesting combination of uh, bass as a classical. Western classical instrument, solo instrument, as well as playing bluegrass, jazz, Indian, you name it. So that's him. And then Rakesh, who is an Indian flautist, uh, comes all the way from India to join us to do this tour. And he plays a, a bamboo flute, which is an instrument which only has, you know, like, a, like a, about yay big and has a few uh, holes instead of keys and he's able to do nuances on it and bend tones and and trills and fly over it and do all sorts of stuff he's probably the finest uh, 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 flautist uh, of his generation in india so we have those three and then a little old me joining and making the fourth wheel and and uh, we're going to be playing some music that we started off earlier as a trio which is edgar and Bela and myself, uh, we were asked to write uh, an inaugural piece of music for the symphony orchestra in Nashville and, and to open up their new concert hall. And that's how we came together. We didn't even play for the first year or so that we were together. We just wrote music for the symphony orchestra. And then that led to, well, I mean, yes, okay, so we can play that music, but that's only 28 minutes. What do we do for the rest of the evening? So we had to come up with uh, uh, music for the trio, that's us. And that led to us, you know, getting to know each other, being friends and, you know, families coming together and all that. So getting to know each other on many very uh, shades, you know, and different shelves that exist in our lives allows us, us to get very comfortable on the stage with each other and play music together. So that's how it all came together. And flute is an instrument that sort of fits right in because our instruments, meaning the bass, banjo, and tabla, are rhythm instruments as well as melodic instruments. So to, to have that ability to be able to support each other rhythmically and melodically already existed. But to have something that has a higher tone and flies right on top in, in a very beautiful melodic uh, spirit, uh, it's great to have Rakesh uh, fill that uh, element in our playing. And so you're going to hear a combination of jazz, bluegrass, Indian classical, Western classical, Indian folk music, all, all that coming together into this one concoction, which uh, kind of sits uh, for me in a very wondrous place. I cannot label this music, but it's a music that is, a, I imagine, a true representative of what exists around the globe uh, when it comes to what we call music. Wow, um, that's a mouthful. Well, I do have a couple questions on that. Oh, one for right now. Uh, mm -hmm. So as you guys are bringing these different elements in to, to form this group, and uh, each one of you bringing something, you know, very unique and different to the, to the group, how difficult is it to kind of 
mesh these styles and these different backgrounds together, um, especially considering you guys hadn't really played or really knew of each other beforehand? Well, I, we kind of knew of each other. Uh, what Bela and Edgar told me was that I was in this group called Shakti, which was in 1975, 76. And they grew up listening to that music. You know, they are like about 10 years younger than I am. So they grew up listening to it and, and they were fans of that group. And then I made an album called Making Music, which came out in 1984-ish. And, and, and they really loved that uh, uh, record as well. So they are, were aware of me. I had seen Flectones, Baylor's group play uh, along with him. And so I was aware of that. Western classic music has always been something that we all love in India very much. Uh, in fact, we have a symphony orchestra in India, which plays Western classical music. And we all sort of listen and grew up with that. And Subin Mehta is one of the great conductors in the Western world who comes from India. And so we, we were all kind of fascinated with all this. So I knew of them, they knew of me, but yes, we hadn't played together. And, but you have to realize that uh, what keeps us apart are the fences that we build which is if I arrive saying, oh, I'm an Indian classical musician and that's all I'm going to contribute, that's not going to work. And, and there are these rules and you have to live by my rules, don't work. And, and same applies to all these other guys. So when we sit down to play music, it's music. You know, the tones are the same anywhere in the world. We all play those same seven notes uh, up and down, whether it's Ethiopia or it's uh, Senegal or India or China or Hong Kong, anywhere. So once that's sorted out, and rhythm, as we know, is universal, uh, so the pulse, and, and it's just put it where you want it. You know, one is where you put it. And, and as they say in the rhythm world, it's the rhythm, stupid. Just, you know, get to know it. And so once we get past all that, uh, you know, humdrum issues of uh, who am I and what it is, it's just who are we becomes more important. And so what we put together right there and then as music, it, 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 I use my tabla not just as an Indian classical instrument, but as a percussion instrument. So it can be a bongo drum, it can be congas, it can be drum set, it can be jambe, it can be whatever it wants it to be. It can be a bass if, you, if that's what is required at that moment. And I'm not going to limit myself uh, and worry about the spirits of, of my ancestors gone before me, you know, throwing a lightning bolt at me if I, you know, digress a bit. It's not going to go anywhere. So we're going to just forget all that and just do what needs to be done to make this all work. Well, I, I was kind of going to go down that, that path a little bit about, I guess, your um, people may be having problems with you playing a traditional instrument in um, unusual and unconventional ways. Is, um, I guess, for the purists of the, or do you kind of get any feedback from them about you, you know, venturing out and fusing with other different um, in the old days, you used to get that. I mean, the purists, what are they worried about? All they are worried about is that, <clears throat> you know, that you maintain the purity of the form that you represent. I mean, for like, for Bela, for, uh, you know, it's important that the bluegrass where the banjo comes from, or actually banjo came from Africa, uh, you know, there's an instrument called gimbri, which they play in, uh, in, in Morocco or Algeria or Senegal, or those places. This is uh, the predecessor to what banjo is now. Uh, uh, that, uh, but what he represents in terms of blue, bluegrass is not messed with so that it becomes something else. But what way you take it, you maintain the integrity of what you bring to the table. So that's very important. I mean, Edgar, for instance, had to actually write pieces of music so uh, for the bass to be a soloist. It didn't even exist in the Western classical world. So he created a whole repertoire that now the basses are thanking him for, <laughs> for now they are allowed to be soloists and, 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 and be backed by an orchestra as opposed to just being in the last row of the string section. So that's interesting that that can happen. So um, uh, we were all uh, looked upon as people who represented the next step in what the music is going to become and go to. But as long as we uh, maintain the purity of that music, like I had to promise my teacher, who was my father, that no matter where I go with, with the music of, you know, that my interaction leads me to, whether it's John McLaughlin, the jazz guitarist, or Herbie Hancock, the pianist, or Bela, or Edgar, or anybody else for that matter, uh, that I will keep returning back to 
what my my root is, what my core is, and I'm going to make sure that I represent that in its pure form as well. So that's what I do. I play 60% of the time my Indian music. And then the rest of the time, the 40% of the time is when I interact and play all this other stuff that, you know, is something that uh, allows me to grow as a musician and, uh, and, and go in directions that Indian music cannot take me to. Uh, and, and so that's what happens. So as long as I'm a representative of both elements in a balanced manner, that's fine with them. So they, they came to terms with that. And, and I'm sure it was true for Bela and Edgar as well as Rakesh. Well, you, you talk about expanding the music and um, being open-minded. Is there is there space in you guys' music and your compositions for maybe another additional uh, person, uh, like a vocalist in this style? Because I know it's a lot of instrumentalists. Is, is it, can a vocalist be a part of something like this as well? Absolutely can. I mean, what does instrument represent? It represents vocal music. Vocal music is the original music form. And so what instruments are doing is imitating that uh, in many ways. And so it's easily possible to add that. Bela and I did uh, one piece, believe it or not, it was a piece of music that was done by a band called Grateful Dead. And it was called Help Is On The Way. And they were making some kind of a record that would, uh, sale of which would benefit uh, a, a very important charity. So so we got involved and and, and we did uh, that Grateful Dead tune and and, and, and and a singer was put in place to do that. I just recently worked with Rene Fleming, an opera singer. And, and, and in Indian music, we, the instrumentalists, accompany vocalists. And, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it's the same with banjo or the bass or anything. So to be able to bring that element in is, 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 a, is a welcome thing. It's a layer that uh, 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 is at, at the moment being portrayed by the flute. Mm -hmm. and, and it will be possible to have a vocalist join in and, and, and become a double harmonic layer that will make it work even more. 